Uh, Steve is the director of our um, um, Soil Mechanics Center in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. So, Steve, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, well, thank you, Bill. Um, thanks all for chiming in. I see there's 92 folks out there, uh, so making me a little bit nervous, but um, I'll do the best I can here. And um, I'm going to go through the presentation here. Basically, I just want to talk just a little bit about permeability and talk about the ASTM standard D5084, which is the flex wall parameter, and that's kind of the state-of-the-art method for um, determine permeability and, and low uh, compacted clay liners or fine grain soils and things like that. Talk a little more about additives for reducing permeability or additives you add to soil to reduce permeability. Bill touched on a little bit about that. I'm going to talk uh, specifically about soil testing procedures, uh, kind of the tests that you should probably request and maybe uh, how we do it. Uh, and not maybe, but how we do it in our laboratories here. And then I want to talk about compacting soils for minimal permeability. And I was going to do a little case study to, to present that topic the best I can. So, what is permeability? Uh, a lot of times when um, people send in soils, they want a, uh, they give me a rate. And sometimes uh, they're not real clear on what the difference between specific discharge and what permeability is and what seepage rates are. Now, specific discharge is the seepage per unit area. It's noted by Q. As you remember your Darcy's equation back when if you took a soil mechanics class, it's uh, specific discharge is equal to KIA. You know, K is the permeability or a hydraulic conductivity, if you will, uh, and, uh, and times the uh, um, I, which is, is just the height of the water and um, length of the passage through the soil liner that um, takes the permeability and gives you, a, with the permeability, gives you a seepage rate. Uh, and units of specific discharge are inches cubed per square inches per day or centimeters cubed per square centimeters per second, however units you, you want, or gallons per acre per day, you know, different type. Uh, and then um, permeability is centimeters per second or inches per day and along those lines. Now, permeability can be influenced by your, your structure of your soil, your soil void spaces, grain size distribution of your compacted materials, and also mineral particles, and, and also the degree of uh, the molding or the molding water content when you compact the soils, which is the degree of saturation. Now, remember that term, degree of saturation, because I'll mention that further in the presentation. Now, soil structure and void spaces affect permeability in a macro sense or a micro sense. A macro, of course, is, um, is kind of how you construct the materials and the maintenance of them. It includes effects of drying, cracks, clods, seams, rit holes, et cetera, rodents, things like that. Micro permeability, what, what we measure in the laboratory, is just the segment, small segment of the soil mass. So, your granular flow of your of your materials. Now this kind of gives you a kind of a picture of a, you know, a soil compacted in a has some macro fractures on the right here. Uh, basically, it's a bunch of little BBs you put to, you have in there as you can show, and water's flowing through them. It's really not a function of the soil itself or what the soil can do, and that's more of a micro permeability that's shown in a dense sense here. Now I'm, I'm going to talk about determining permeability of different methods. Uh, really I'm um, um, talking about ag waste liner uh, ponds and mostly that's done through lab testing. Now there's estimates out there, they're really geared, there's equations and charts out there in literature, they're really geared for uh, coarse grain soils, mostly clean sands and things, but you can get uh, um, some estimates on some dirty sand materials and things that are pretty accurate and um, 
those are um, methods are pretty good for filter design or drains that you might have associated with your liner if if you do. And there's a few field testing methods that you can do out there on liners itself, but they're kind of uh, geared towards thicker liners versus thinner liners, and I'll talk about that just a little bit too. Now the two laboratory tests out there, according to their ASTM, it's all called a constant head parameter and the falling head flexible wall parameter. Now the constant head is suitable for your high K values, and that's usually soils with less than 10% fines that pass the number 200. And in most cases, it's difficult to saturate the soils, so it's really kind of done on cleaner materials. Uh, the falling head is really suitable, is the test suitable for these clay liners, uh, for these, I should say, um, lower K values, you're talking about 10 to something fine or slower than 10 to the minus three, but you know, we're shooting for 10 to the minus seven, 10 to the minus six depends on the situation. And uh, you can get 100% saturation uh, in the materials through, through this test. And it's also considered, again, the state of the art test procedure. Again, um, uh, constant hand per parameters for coarse grain soils. Uh, and it's not possible to saturate moist soil, especially with fine grain soils with equipment. It'll take you a long time, weeks, to run it and to get it saturated. And then you can start running the test. And it, that, in that case, it takes a long time uh, to run. Now, the flex wall, which is D5084, and I'll go through this test to a little detail. And it's really suitable for any type of soil, and it's possible, again, to saturate the soil with the equipment. And you can get a result of 10 to the minus 9, and that's centimeters per second kind of permeability. And you can obtain these quickly and accurately. And this is still a picture of our, uh, I, I manage two laboratories in our agency. I have one I sit at in Lincoln, Nebraska, and we also have one down in Fort Worth, Texas. And on the right is our Lincoln setup, and our left uh, down there in Fort Worth. Just to give you a visual of what the equipment looks like. Now factors also, you know, that affect permeability as a percent of fines that make a big impact. Also, the uh, D10, the D15, D20 size of your gradation. And I talked a little bit about structure voids and things like that of, of the material. You also, uh, permeability estimates can be affected by m macro features like dry and cracks. You know, it can in increase it a thousand times. And also, what's really important is your chemical properties, and that's really a uh, with your clays, some silts have some chemical issues that you have to deal with. Um, you know, uh, chemical issues come from the bedrock that the soil is uh, desiccated from. Now, I'll talk about field tests a little bit. There's a single ring insulometer. I'm sorry I couldn't find a picture of this thing. They're, they're rarely done, they're very expensive, and they're pretty intense to do. And it's suitable for low, but it's suitable for uh, very low K values. Now, also, there's a bout well or two stage borehole test out there. I have a couple pictures of it. It's more inexpensive, it's relatively quick, it's better. It's really set up for higher K values, something then, uh, faster than 10 to the minus 6 centimeters per second. And, but it's it's inexpensive and it's it sometimes it, you, you can do it a little bit more quickly. And there's kind of a picture of the bout well test apparatus. Um, again, it, if you put it in a clay liner and and try to run this test, it'll take you a long time to run. Uh, you might have time to do some fishing wire out there if you want to. Anyway. Um, uh, the, also, the beauty of this test, if you do a do, uh, get a probability downstream of your um, liner or your 
lagoon or storage pond, you can uh, get a horizontal permeability in, in with it as well, and you can maybe do some um, flow net or you know a computer modeling with using this get data with that. So. Okay, that's kind of the end of the kind of introductory of permeability, if you will. Uh, I'm going to talk about the D5084 flexible wall permeability a little bit. And again, a per preferred method, state of the art, uh, what it allows you uh, to do is uh, put a flexible membrane uh, around your sample and confine it. And you can put, you can back, then you can back pressure saturated, make sure the, the sample is saturated. And then you can put differential heads across it and force water through it. But there's things you have to follow not to consolidate the sample very much. And it's all in the ASTM. It spells out pretty well. I'll go through it a little bit. And you can run all kinds of different tests with it uh, to get your permeability coefficient, um, constant head. And what we like to do is method C, falling head, rising tail water. We think that models the um, liners a little bit better. Now I want to try to get into the index or some testing procedures that you should maybe when you're assigning a permeability test. Ideally, uh, we like before we assign any permeability test, we like to do index tests on it, basically to classify the soil and also get a natural water content or the you know water content of the borrow soils before we mold it. And um, typically, the first test we assigned, uh, we like to go off to standard Proctor density, and uh, we try to pick the first test at about 95% of it at a water content that's about 80% of theoretical saturation, 80 to 85, which is, for typical soils, it's about 2% wet of your optimum water content from your compaction curve. Now, if, if the soils are naturally high water more than about 4% wet of optimum, naturally. Uh, compaction at 95% of the standard proctor it may be difficult because you're compacting against that zero air voids curve, as, you know, as most of you know. And so we may assign the task at 90% of density and then uh, uh, give the water content that's still about 80 to 85% of theoretical saturation. Now, if uh, uh, the soil comes in naturally a little bit drier and less than 4% wet of optimum, uh, we'll try to shoot for that 95% of standard proctor density. Um, again, at about 80% of uh, theoretical saturation. Now, once that uh, is assigned, um, we'll, we'll take our sam or some soil and we'll, our sample We'll spray it up with water to assign water content for the test, and we'll seal the container and let it cure so it gets uniformly moist throughout the whole sample in a closed container. Um, then uh, once we're ready after that time period, we'll, we'll take another water content test, and then once it's at the, our target uh, water content, we'll start compacting it into a split mold to a density specified for the test. And um, now we, the, the sample is compacted into mold to the specific dry density at the specific water contents. We know the dry density and we know the water contents so we can get the moist density too. And then we compact it at sickle, six equal lifts. And then each layer is scarified prior to the, the next lift. And the um, reason for that, the ASTM has different methods of, of determining uh, or, or getting a, a, a slug at that density. You could mold it in a, a proctor and, and carve it out like you would a shear test out of a, a, you know, a Shelby tube or something like that. As you can see, you know, there's a picture of the split mold, and then you can see the bottom photo there, you get six equal 
um, lifts. We measure out each lift. We know how much material uh, is in a divided by six, and we can compact it in there. And we found this is uh, we could get um, repeatable answers between our two labs by going this method. Is why we show, why we do it. Okay, placing the sample in the parameter um, is carefully removed from the split mold and placed on a cell pedestal, weights, membranes, and O-rings and caps. Membrane sealed to the bottom pedestal of the cell with two O-rings and the seal to the top with two or more as well. Then it's ready uh, for the uh, cell chamber in the top and in the bottom. You can see the cell chamber is, is ready for the chamber water. And this is what gives us the confining pressure to keep the membrane against the sample. And um, this is kind of a one in, in set up here. Uh, this, we have a line to the top of the sample and we also have a line, line to the bottom of the sample and we have a line to the cell that we put water and uh, develop the gradients. Now, um, for uh, flow through the sample here, um, we have air, air regulars, barrettes with air and water interface, and uh, also you can see the water path that goes to the bottom of the cell and we force water up through the bottom of the sample when we run our test. Once placed in the cell, a confining pressure is applied to the sample. A confining pressure is used to seal the membrane, as I mentioned. Then the sample is back pressure to saturate sample for the test. Back pressure saturation is the application of the gas air, and um, the air bubbles become very small. Then they are able to be removed from the void spaces that are filling. So all you have is soil and air and um, water in your sample and completely saturated. And then pressure is, is applied or differential pressure is applied in increments to reduce consolidation on the sample. And that's all spelled out in the ASTM. Again, we use method C, pollen head, brazen tail water. And again, there's five other methods in the ASTM that you can do. Okay, readings of the inlet and outlet barrettes are selected, time intervals are taken. These readings permit calculation of the permeability, coefficient of permeability. And this is kind of the flexible equation when uh, uh, in versus out, volume in versus out, equation can be, two can be used to calculate the, the permeability of the soil. Simple permeability results are achieved when inflow um, volume versus outflow volume between 0.75 and 1.25, and steady state is uh, achieved when four readings are obtained, which are no more uh, individually than 25% of the average of the readings, and the head loss must be less than 75% of the initial maximum head loss for the set of readings then the permeability can be obtained with taking the average of those four readings. You know, 